it's Lisa. I have six photos that I printed several months ago and I just went ahead and printed them as four by sixes because I didn't know quite what I was going to do with them. So they could stand some cropping and uh, the sketch I've worked out, I did some measuring and I figured out that at two and a half inches wide I would be able to cover everything that was important in a particular sketch get the people and, and the art and things that are in that and four inches high would work as well since there are already um, many of them uh, set of four inches so I'm gonna crop them all down and do them in this arrangement and then use some circle designs to um, embellish the page I don't think I'll end up using hearts here I didn't know what I was going to use when I did this sketch um, actually what I found were some butterflies and the reason I'm using butterflies is there's another uh, two page layout that I did a few months ago that was at the same location it was just the inside of the gallery versus their outside art and I used butterflies for that because it was relevant to to what was in that layout so I decided I'd do butterflies again but I would do some some things with them to make them look a little more interesting uh, besides just putting uh, ink over them I'm going to do some stamping and, and some things that I did on a piece of um, mixed media a few months ago and so we'll see that later on in the video. While I was uh, running through my embellishments I also found some things that I can use up here. Uh, sometimes I like to do that is just see what do I have that I haven't used in a long time and see if I can work that into a layout. For the papers for the layout the blue and green colors really go great with these papers from Pebbles. The Family Ties collection, I've used this quite a bit. Um, I'm getting down to where things are, are cut up pretty much. The challenge with it, though, is that these papers do not in any way go with my mother, who's a big factor in this layout and going to be part of the subject of the story. This is just not her style at all. So while the, the, they matched in color, they didn't really go with the story, and they didn't match uh, the people in the um, layout. The 6x6 six six pad from Echo Park, for the record, is a lot closer. So I may use... Um, some of these if I use the papers only for these circles and all I don't need a lot of paper anyway so the six by six would work great for that for the background I'm going to use uh, cardstock and I'm going to do some misting uh, in these three key areas I was just going to throw the mist on there just you know just spray it on but I do have this new stencil I love to play with new stuff um, from Christy Tollinson it's not new to the market it's just new to me I haven't had it very long I've used it for um, Oh, what do you call it? The modeling paste, and it worked great. Um, I want to see how it does with spray mist. And that's the lovely thing about cardstock is if I screw it up, I've probably got more of this, or I can always flip it over to the back. This is a piece from Michaels, and I don't know what the color is. Um, it was labeled, of course, in the store, but it's kind of a light gray, sort of a putty color. It's a wonderful color because it really goes great with the trees and all, but it's not as stark as doing something. Like if I just put a white background against these photos, that's pretty bold, or that's pretty stark. So I think that this color will be a, a nice uh, complement. I'm going to need something down beside of the photos and I have a sticker although this is a Christmas sticker this one um, is really good in color or I may do some trim so those are uh, kind of where I'm going I think the first thing I'm going to do is start figuring out these photos again I want uh, four inch long pieces so that's easy and then two and a half inches wide so I'm going to do some uh, cutting oh there is one thing I need to consider on my sketch down here, when I was trying to figure out a circle embellishment, I thought it would be fun to do like a, a, a frame of a circle over part of the photos, and it'll definitely frame this photo, but you can see how it comes right in the middle of this one. So what I'm going to need to do here is either come up with a photo that I can crop so that the subject is here or here, or I'll just have to split out part of that circle that I cut. Um, the photo I'm leaning towards, let's, let's put them in the order they're going to be in. This was the first one that was taken, so I'll probably do it. And I'd like to do these two together because they, they're they the main subject of, of this, and I think they kind of go together. Um, I think I'll put us in this circle frame here, and then that leaves this one of my mom here on the side. And what I could do is crop it so that, if I want it two and a half inches wide, so that she's over here towards this edge and that circle will come this way. So I kind of have to see that looks good. I could put her on the inside of it, but there's a lot of embellishment stuff there. I'm afraid she might get cut off completely if I do that. I think I may want to put her on the outside. I think that would be better. 
there's nothing else really in there that isn't covered somewhere else in the in the photo. So I think that's the way I'll crop it, and we'll um, we'll go from there. I'm going to drop the blue mist on there in little droplets. So I'm going to start with spraying the green mist. I have some here from October Afternoon, all aboard. And then this color called Bookworm from Studio Calico that turned out to be really bold. So I didn't use very much of that. Just a little bit here and there. Gives a nice subtle accent to the page. And down here at the bottom, I'm not worrying about the right side of that stencil at all because all that will be covered up with the uh, photos. Okay, the little blue droplets, I forgot to do this when I had the box here on the table. That turned into a near disaster because I took the layout over to where I normally keep my box, sprinkled my little blue drops on there, and I set my mist down on the carpet, which I know I shouldn't do. I turned it over. I spilled the blue boarding pass October afternoon ink on my carpet, and in my rush to get it cleaned up, I turned it over again because I hadn't put the, the top back on it. So two globs of blue, it looked like a Smurf had, had thrown up on my carpet. So anyway, but I'm pleased to report that a lot of paper towels and a little bit of Resolve Cleaner, I think I could have even left that off, but a lot of wet paper towels got up all of that blue ink. You can't tell it's there at all. So my green carpet is back to green and it looks so much better. Um, I, if I could have had the time and, and the thought processes, I would have taken a before and after picture, but it looks so, it, you can't tell it. So I'm really pleased that, that that came out. You can see though that my fingers have a lot of blue on them. And I, may have, I may be wearing that the rest of the day. All right, well that disaster is averted, so now uh, let's pick some uh, papers. I went ahead and glued my photos down in the arrangement that I wanted them. So now I'm just going through these 6x6 six six papers and this one 12x12 12 12 that I'm considering to, uh, doing there for the edge. I've got to do the circles. Uh, the, the solid green, I think, will probably be that circle on the bottom, and I'm looking at some of the blues for the other circles. Just deciding on different patterns here. I really like that chevron. I like the movement um, energy that uh, chevrons give for that larger circle. And this black border, that's, my mother wears a lot of black, and that, I think, really dresses up the layout and makes it go for her. Now down here on the side, instead of paper, I'm considering using trim. So I have some really pretty trims. I find the prettiest trims come from the um, stamping stores for card makers because they always use beautiful trims. So I'm just experimenting with some different ones. This one um, that I only have just enough for the layout, this lacy one, is from Webster's Pages. And I really thought I would like it, but once I got it down there, it seemed a little bit too busy. So I'm leaning towards this one. That it's actually got a little velour, and it has a goldish background, which would introduce a new color. So it looks like just that by itself will be enough to go on the edge. I'm still trying to work that one um, green mesh trim in there, but it just it just didn't work. All right, now I'm cutting my circles, and I measured my um, the size. I need a four and a half inch circle for that largest one. I use the Creative Memory circle cutters still. Uh, there's lots of circle cutting systems, but as long as my blades hold out, I guess this is the one that I'll keep on using. And some of that will get cut off on the side. I want to do a circle to go down there at the bottom. And the, if you're cutting a circle inside of a circle, you cut the outside first, the biggest one first, and then cut the little one out of the inside. And I did that, but I've got it too narrow. I needed to have made it larger. So I'm going to use it for a border for the large circle that I did, and then cut out a really, uh, use a real small circle cutter to give myself a wide bordered circle down at the bottom. And I still need a circle for up at the top. We'll cut that out. And then down at the very bottom of the page, that one has a little tiny circle inside. It's two inches. I don't have a two inch circle punch, so I'm going to continue here with the Creative Memories cutters and cut out a little circle there. It'll have a butterfly on it. And again, those are going to get trimmed off. In fact, I need to go ahead and do that get that out of the way. And I just trimmed these with the scissors since the end is going to be tucked inside. So it didn't need to go to the paper trimmer or anything. Tuck quite a bit of that other one in. And lay my butterflies out to see how they look. Liking that, the bottom will get cut off. And I do want a little bit of that black border. 
So I have that down and I've got my title pulled out here and the problem I'm having with my title is it's covering up some of the people in my photo and also my butterflies, if I put them the butterfly there above the title, it's ending up being like a row of butterflies at the top and then one sticking down there at the bottom. So I decided to move the title up and put the butterfly underneath. Um, and that actually worked better for my particular arrangement here with the photos and just making it more, a little more balanced. Now we want to dress these butterflies up some. I'm going to take some paint and what I'm doing is creating this effect that I had on this art piece I did some time ago. I didn't do a video on this but I had it on my blog. Um, they have glossy accents on top and it makes a real hard firm surface there that um, that holds up really well and makes a beautiful finish. So what I'm going to do is paint them first and then I'll do some stamping and add the glossy accents. And um, we're trying to get a gold color here that looks kind of like this trim, the background of the trim. So I have some transparent paint that will allow the um, it happens to be a good color and it will allow the wood grain to really show through. And I thought something interesting about these butterflies I'd never noticed before. They're cut in different directions. So the wood grain goes across on some of them and up and down on some of them. These were some from Michaels. And I just it just makes a really interesting look. It took a little more paint than I expected. I had to, to get some more out there. Uh, the wood really soaked up a lot of paint. And that's a beautiful color. It's a little bit bold. To tone it down some, I'm going to take some white um, craft ink from Stamping Up. Any white pigment ink would work. Now this stuff doesn't dry very easily. You have to heat set it. But it does tone the color down. So I'm adding some over the top and then some around the edges here in a minute. I'm just laying them out on the layout to see how they're looking. They're looking good. Still a little bit RNG, but if I add the um, white around the edges and I'm going to be doing some stamping to them as well. Just heat set those. The stamps are some word stamps uh, called Define Your Life from Stamping Up. Any word stamps for this would work but I went through my little key that I made for these and decided on the words very and the word unique because um, that fits the two folks that are <laughs> the primary subjects of my um, layout, my husband and my mom. So just stamping those on the butterfly, one word, or both words on each butterfly, some on the top, some on the bottom. And I'm not using anything to line them up. I actually end up kind of double stamping on this one, but it's, it gets the words on there and gives that kind of text, text effect. Now to put the glossy accents on, I just squeeze it on there really thick. And it comes out looking cloudy, but it will dry clear and you'll be able to see the words through it. The Stamping Up ink that I applied there, that basic gray ink that I use for my words, that's a, a, a dye ink that dries immediately. If you were using some kind of pigment ink that took time to dry, you'd either need to let it dry or heat set it because otherwise the glossy accents would make it smear. But in this case, I can just go right over the top of it. And there I have two of them done with the glossy accents, and I'll do the third one, just kind of see how they look. All right, and they've dried now and they have a beautiful finish to them and they're ready to go. And I let those dry, I can't remember, if, I think I let them dry overnight. I think when I did this layout we had a lot going on and it, it ended up taking me days to, to get this thing finished working a little bit at a time. So those got to a good overnight dry and now I'm adding some different papers in there, a little bit of black paper there, and I'm going to add some washi tape over on the left. I'd like to do that. I like to use the same colors around my layout, but a lot of times I use different materials. So I get a lot of variety in the materials, and of course I've got my washi tape on crooked. I'll straighten it out. I never get that stuff straight. And I still have those gems to add. And here I've got a little bit more washi tape that's going to go on, and we'll see the final layout. And here's our finished page. Taking a look at the sketch, we've got the misting on the background and then some circle elements. Instead of the hearts, I used butterflies and I added uh, these rhinestones that I happen to have three of them left. Um, adding a little color over here with the washi tape to balance this strip of pattern paper. That's what I ended up doing that didn't get caught on video. I like to do that sometimes is have the same color but two different types of materials. Actually I do that pretty often. So I've got green uh, paper here whereas I have green washi tape on this side. Get kind of close up to those 
butterflies and the trim. You could use washi tape or pattern paper for that trim. And then these um, circle design really worked out well there. So anyway, that's my page. And thank you for watching today. Please check out my blog uh, for more information.